Howdy, partner. Merry Christmas. Haha. <laughs> Just kidding, it's me, Michael. I'm not actually a prospector. But it is Christmas, so I'm going to teach you what Christmas is all about. Every year, hundreds of people celebrate Christmas. My uncle, my grandma, Stephen at the gas station with the lazy eye. I invited my friend Adam over, but he's Jewish, so he's not allowed to celebrate Christmas. Instead, he's going to go home and play with his dreidel, which is like a Beyblade, but instead of having fun watching it battle other Beyblades, you sit there and think about how much fun you could be having if you had accepted Jesus Christ as the Messiah instead of killing him. Christmas is basically just like a giant Jesus birthday party, you know, so you can't like kill a guy and then expect to be invited to his birthday party. I mean, Jesus was such a good guy that people still celebrate his birthday even though he died all the way back in 1980. So let's have a moment of silence for him right now. You may be asking yourself right now just how good could Jesus have really been for people to still want to celebrate his birthday even though he died all the way back in ancient times. Well, Jesus wanted to make sure that nobody ever suffered, and he noticed how sad guests were at birthday parties over the years, because being a guest at a birthday party is basically like congratulating somebody for allowing you to watch them open gifts that you gave them for a few hours. So what did Jesus do? Well, he was such a good guy that he thought on his birthday everybody should be able to get a present. But how can you ensure everybody got a present on his birthday to make sure that nobody got left out, like poor people? Poor people can't always have presents. They're always, you know, poor and stuff. So, while working as a carpenter, Jesus met a fellow Mexican, Santa Ana, a retired Mexican general who, after his defeat by Sam Houston at the Battle of San Jacinto, got way fired and put on a few pounds. One day, Santa Ana wore a red suit to work, and an idea popped into his head that Santa Ana could deliver the gifts to everyone in the world. So he approached Santa Ana with his idea. Santa Ana said, how would I be able to do that? There's a whole lot of people in the world, like a lot of people. And Jesus was like, just jump down the chimneys in the middle of the night and just leave presents on the ground. And then Santa Ana was like, Jesus, most people won't like the idea of a Mexican guy breaking into their house in the middle of the night, even if I am giving them presents. Plus, how do I get into every house in the world in one night? Some houses are way tall, Jesus, and I'm old and fat. So how do I even fit in a chimney when I'm old and fat? And where am I even going to get all the presents, Jesus? Do you know how much it would cost to buy all those presents? You know, Santa Ana was right. So Jesus decided Santa Ana had to change his name to sound suddenly more white. So he picked the name Santa Claus so that Santa Ana would sound German, which is a really white country that, historically speaking, enjoyed being white so much that it got him into a little bit of trouble. A little, little bit of trouble. A little bit. And, uh, you know, actually, it worked out pretty well for Jesus because, you know, Jesus had a pretty bad falling out with the Jews, so you know, they don't get presents on his birthday, and nobody would believe that a German guy would go out of his way to deliver presents to a Jew, you know, gives them a little more credibility as Santa Claus, Klaus, made it a little bit more believable, you know, but you know, Jesus knew that changing his name wouldn't be enough, I mean, like, who would believe a German guy named Santa Claus would live in the middle of Mexico, so he had to move him to the literal whitest place on the planet, the North Pole, a place so cold that's made entirely out of ice, but where a white guy would still wear cargo shorts and say, eh, it's not that cold. But like, the North Pole is like way far away from all the things in the world. A lot of no houses up in the North Pole. People can't deliver gifts. So how is Santa Claus going to get around the world? So, planes weren't invented by the time Jesus was inventing Christmas. And in, during that time, King Arthur had done, got done killing all the dragons in Skyrim years ago. So he couldn't use them to go around the world. But while strolling the frozen wastes of the North Pole, saw a reindeer and decided they could fly really fast. Just like that. I mean, if he could turn water into wine, why not, right? So that solves the delivery problem, but now where do you get the presents? It would cost a lot of money to give everybody in the world presents at once. And Santa Anna Claus was right. Santa Anna, Santa Anna Claus, Santa Claus was right. Then Jesus remembered that they just got finished making the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie and there would be a large number of midgets entering the workforce at the same time. Jesus was an equal opportunity employer, a fat boss, midget staff, but no accommodations for the crippled. So he had to do something about that. And just like that, 
the candy cane was born. But then Santa Anna was like, okay, even if I can get there with the presents and then climb down the chimney and put the presents on the ground, I can't just leave the presents on the ground next to the fireplace. That's a fire hazard. Well, if somebody tripped, Jesus, we gotta have, like, a designated spot for the presents. Also, what if they have a fire when I'm trying to go down the chimney and I die real bad? Like, real bad. And Jesus, being the genius that he is, said, hey, dude, I'll just tell people, put a tree in the living room. So that nobody would light a fire with a tree in the living room. Otherwise, they'll start a forest fire. And Smokey the Bear says, only you can prevent forest fires. Genius. But... That doesn't solve where you put the presents. You can't just put them in front of the fireplace. And she was like, well, just shove them in a sock. And that's that's where stockings came from. And Christmas was born. And there you have it. That's how Christmas came to be. So, thank you for coming down and sharing the spirit of the holidays with me. I hope you had a fun time learning as much as I did. Merry Christmas and to all a good night.